other day I was scrolling on YouTube and I found this plugin called Cordy Mist. That was an accident, but yeah, I found this plugin and it came out about a year ago and it was only 50 bucks. So I figured why not give it a shot? It looked pretty interesting. Basically, it's a chord generator and it allows you to get some soulful sounding chords out pretty easily and you don't even really need a MIDI controller to do it. So let's jump into it and let me show you guys what is so good about it. So jumping in, once you drop the plugin in, this is what it looks like. And when you hit Chordy Mist, you get this box right here. So this is the interface and it's pretty simple once you get it down. But as you can see, so you're presented with root notes, chord structures, inversions, transpose, stacking. Uh, you have a keyboard layout here to manipulate the chords if you need. And you also have some settings down here to change the way the chord is played. Moving forward, we have this little drum rack looking thing. And this is where you store your chords. So it's like a chord bank and you can store a lot as you can see so each box can be filled up enough talking let's go ahead and play some chords so say you just jumped in to ableton or serato or fl studio or whatever you're using and you want to get some chords down the way to set it up is kind of hard it was kind of confusing because i didn't find no manuals or nothing there was only one other video on youtube describing how to use this basically what you can do is drop cordy mist into a separate track and you're going to have to put midi 2 and then set it to your instrument. So I'm gonna be using Neo Soul Keys Studio by Gospel Musicians. On that track, you're gonna set MIDI from and Cordy Mist. And then make sure you put the monitor in. After that, you should be able to play your chords. Right now, each chord is gonna be a C minor seven or C minor 11. So as you see, so as you can see, every chord, every chord is the same. So let's go ahead and change that. So one way we can do that is by manually inputting what kind of chord we want. So say we want a D major 13. Or we can say I want a D dominant 7 sus 4. So... Or a D diminished seven or a F minor 13. But that can take some time and that can require some music theory for you to know what you're actually doing. So let's go ahead and hit this dice and let's hit this dice as well. So basically each of these have different functions. This dice will randomly choose a root note in this top section. Then this dice randomly chooses a chord anywhere from this section right here. But say I wanted to specify which kind of chord I wanted, I can hit this capital M and now it's only gonna play major chords. Or I can hit this lowercase m and it's gonna only play minor chords. But let's go ahead and leave the dice on for the type of chord and let's see if we can get something. All right, so we're gonna go with that. A F major 13. And now let's get a second chord. So let's go ahead and turn off stack. Um, and I'll explain what these do in a minute. But let's go ahead and get this second chord. So we already have this F minor or F major. Let's go ahead and hit the dice. And I believe that Chordy Miss actually helps you out in choosing chords. So even though you have the dice on and it's on a random selection, it's going to also choose chords that sound good with your previous chords. I believe, don't quote me, but that's what I believe. So let's go ahead and play the first, and then play the second. Nah. Ah, uh, there we go. So let's go ahead, turn off them dice, and now. Let's be organized and change the color. So we can do that purple or pink, whatever that color is. Red. Perfect. All right, now say I like the chord, but I'm not satisfied. 
we can manipulate this chord so much. So we can either change the structure of it. It could be closed. We could play top thirds. We could play it open and it's gonna stretch it out and really make that chord sound nice and wide. We could do comping. And yeah, I usually roll with close or top third. But I'm satisfied with this structure. Uh, we can also change inversions. We can change the transpose. And we can stack the chords on each other. So we can hit stack and depending on which number we add, that's going to be the amount of chords that they stack. And they're going to stack it by an octave. So, so we have the first. And then when we hit stack. And then we hit stack number two. But yeah, it keeps building. Sometimes it can be too much and overwhelming. So you got to use it. Use it with a grain of salt. Jumping down to this section, we have one shot, which is basically... Once I hit the key, it's going to continue to play for however long the duration sync is. Up next, we have sustain. If I tap the key, the chord's not going to play that long. If I hold the key, it's going to sustain it and it's going to play it for however long you hold it. We have arpeggiators as well. And then we have arpeggiate. I forgot what this one is, but it's also an arpeggio. I believe it sustains the notes as it arpeggiates. Sounds like it. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. All right, cool. So going on to the direction. We can have the chord ascend. We can have it descend. We can have it start at the root note. And then once it gets to the top, it goes back down. So let me show you all those examples. So this is the example of ascending. This is the example of descending. And then we can do root note up and then back down. And yeah, I mean, so many options. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy. It can get it can get pretty uh, wild. But moving on, let's go ahead to the rate. So the rate is basically how fast the chord is being played. So if I turn this joint up, it's going to play that chord nice and slow. If I put it down low, It's going to play it a lot faster. This affects the stacks. So if I add a stack, put that one extra slow. Let's see. Let's see if these notes play uh, fast and then the gray ones play slow. Yep. Moving on, we have duration sync. Duration sync is how long the note is going to be played for. So if I have one over one, it's going to be played for a full bar. And then it cuts off. If I do this, it's going to be for half a bar. If I do this, it's going to be for a quarter. If I do one over 192nd, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. That's how long the notes are going to be played for. If you hit duration sync, it'll bring you to this page and you'll be able to freely change however long you want the notes to be played. So you won't be restricted to just a bar or half a bar or a, a, each note playing for quarter notes. So yeah, that's a cool little trick. And same thing with the rate. Moving on, we have velocity. And this is pretty self-explanatory is how hard the notes are going to be played. So yeah, pretty cool. Skip another self-explanatory one. It's going to skip notes. Pretty cool. Now amount is going to be the amount of notes that are going to be played. So if I select two, it's going to be two notes. If I select five, five notes are going to be played. And it's always going to play the same notes because I have the direction going up. But if I randomize it, I can play five random notes. So you have some unpredictability going on right there, which is nice if you want to change it up and not have your song sounding so robotic. You can change the pitch as well. Up 
next we have group so when you set something to a group say group one it's going to have its own set of parameters that are set and any core that is in that group are going to have those same uh parameters so let's go ahead at the first one and now both my chords are in the same group we can go ahead and change how fast the notes are being played so we can change the rate and both chord banks are going to be affected we can do high velocity or low to high i can hit sustain and both of them are going to be affected so yeah i mean that's pretty cool also i want to save this for last because i love this feature pitch bend we can manipulate the pitch throughout the chords and they have a bunch of different uh different graphs for us to use one that i like to use is this one let me turn that velocity down you kind of just hear it wiggle the pitch at the end so subtle or we can put the depth at 100 percent you can also change the rate so if i put it at one second this little pitch bend is going to be going on for a whole 1.72 seconds and yeah we can do it to where it's pitch bending throughout the whole chord we can speed it up We can even have it loop. This pitch bend curve can continue to loop for however long I hold the note. That's pretty much the VST right there. And I actually made a beat. So let's go ahead and leave this session and go into the beat that I made. All right, so here we are in the beat. And believe it or not, I actually made this beat without any MIDI controllers. I was just chilling up in bed and I was like, let's try to get some now. Pause. I started to beat off with some drums. I actually got a nice little drum break from Splice. So this is how that drum break sounds. Basically what I did was I chopped it up, threw it up in the drum rack and I separated the drums from kick, snare, hi-hat and uh, extra kick. And I also had some random vocals and scratching effects. And I was really going for a boom bap feel. So that's why I got those kind of vocals. And these drums were actually perfect once I uh, recorded them. So this is the recording that I got. And you might notice that these drums are crazy off the grid. So. The snare is supposed to be hitting on the two, it's hitting way before the two. The kick is supposed to be hitting on the one, it's hitting way before the one. But I mean, that's just how it be sometimes, you know. It was just one of them five minute beats that just turned out good somehow. So this is how the drums sound. But yeah, pretty cool, pretty simple, and pretty groovy. Up next, we have the chords. So as you can see, I have the chords recorded right here. And I'm just, it's simple. Press one note and it activates a chord. So let's go ahead and open up Chordy Mist. And this is what we got. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So let's go ahead and see what we did with these chords and just play the chords. So we have. So we have an F diminished, so an F minor, and then off with two suspended chords. So I'm gonna be honest, if I was playing that on the keyboard, or I'm, I can't even say if I was playing that on the keyboard, there probably would have been no way that I would have thought of those chords on the piano. But I mean, thanks to this, thanks to the randomizer and the vast option of chords here, I was able to get something that sounds pretty groovy and it's pretty cool but it's also kind of scary because it's like damn anybody can do this now but you got to figure out a way to stick out and rock with it moving on on the pitch bin also uh changed up some things so you'll see it change right here let's check it out you see it moving up and down I mean, 
that's pretty much it for the chords. It was it was just that simple. And the way I got the chords was honestly just by sitting up and pressing random notes. <laughs> Honestly, it could be a little boring, honestly, because sometimes I'm just sitting there just pressing random notes, just waiting to see what sticks. And then I finally find something. But I mean, I guess that's the price you got to pay because it's like you're not really playing it on the piano. Moving on, we got a nice little bass line. <laughs> a second uh, pattern going on with the chords. And that was pretty much the beat, you know? On the, of course, there were other things I did, like add compressors to the mass channel and side chain and all that good stuff. But I just wanted to give you a quick example of the kind of beats you can make with this Plug in. I also forgot to mention that the chords are pitched up on my keys uh, and also my bass line. So it's not actually these chords that you see it presenting. It's actually uh, one key higher. So yeah, uh, this is what I got. That's gonna do it for the beat. I'm pretty satisfied with how this turned out and I'm actually starting a beat stars page. I'm gonna be doing a little challenge to see if I can actually make some money as a producer on beat stars. Uh, so I'm gonna be posting for 30 days on beat stars and showing you guys the results at the end of the 30 days. So if you guys are interested in purchasing this beat, uh, it'll be on my beat stars page and I'll put the link in the description below. So. With all that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're gonna be giving Cordy Mist a try, go ahead, let me know. And if you guys are gonna be checking out that B Star page, go ahead, let me know as well. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys. Peace out.